Dramatization. After a car wreck, you may have to fight with a highly trained insurance company rep whose job is to knock your damaged claim down and out. It's a bad idea to enter the ring alone against a trained boxer, and it could be a bad idea to fight against a big insurance company by yourself. When the bell rings, attorney Dennis Sperling will be there to fight for your right. If you've been seriously injured in a car wreck, call me, attorney Dennis Sperling, at 866-529-2444. That's 866-529-2444. Dramatization. Bad drivers cause car wrecks. Not paying attention to the road, operating electronic devices, and drinking while driving can lead to serious injuries. If you've been the victim of a bad driver, a trial lawyer may be able to help you recover money to pay your medical bills, reimburse you for lost wages, and compensate you for the pain caused by your injuries. If you, your friends, or family have been injured in a car wreck, contact me, Attorney Dennis Sperling, toll free, 866-529-2444. I'm here to help. Hi, my name is Dennis Sperling. I'm not a lawyer, but my daddy is. Yeah. If you've been hurt in a car accident, then call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, I know why. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you've been involved in a car accident, call my daddy returning Dennis Sperling. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Sperling. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me at 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, darling, daddy. My name is Stephanie, and these are my two adorable and handsome sons. And that is my ex-husband, attorney Dennis Sperling. He practices personal injury law and will be more than happy to help you with claims arising from automobile accidents. He doesn't get paid unless you get paid. And as we first wives know, the more our ex-husbands get paid, the more we get paid. So let me help him help you. Call Mr. Mm -hmm. Sperling at 713-229-0770. Call my dad, Dennis Sperling, I don't want you going around picking on anybody, and I don't want you to be a bully. It's my job as father to prepare my sons for what's out there. Anthony, my trainer, yeah. is your trainer. That's my trainer now. Yeah. Yeah. Drop. No good. Every kid needs to have that lesson. Yeah. How's it going with those slabs? They have a sign on them. They're for sale, right? Roman. Wax on, wax off. Like that. <laughs> Coming up next on. Yeah, but the attorney thing, man, you gotta make sure you do that, man, so you would know yeah. definitely that, that that's your child. I don't I don't know if the teacher called you. Dennis's teacher stopped me in the hallway today to tell me that he almost got in a fight. And I don't want you to be a bully either. You hear me? But you are to defend yourself. I oppose Dennis sending the boys to karate. Open your it! Yeah! If somebody hits me, I'm supposed to hit them back harder. Push up, throw your nothing. Come on, down, up, down, let's go. Co parenting with the Spurling. Right now, she and I are negotiating. I'm trying to get her to do some dances for me. Some of them sleek, sexy, Latina booty dances.
You understand what I'm saying? Hate me all you want to, baby. I don't mind hating me. Hate, hate all you can. Let me go the other way. Hate, hate, hate all you can. Hate, hate everything. But I'm gonna still make you look good. Black men winning. Okay, come on. Somebody type that in the chat room. Black men winning. Okay, because that's just what's happening. We are winning. We win it. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We win it. We win it. We win it. I know they hating out here. Yeah. I know they mad. They all in their feelings. But baby, I don't care. She calling the police on me and everything. Yeah. Somebody need to get on the phone, call my attorney. Turn it. Dealing with these hard headed hoes who ain't learning. Learning. She acting all ignorant like a motherfucking menace. She better bundle luck, cause bitch is about to be winner. Uh. Niggas acting timid, why you think she treat a nigga so bad? Turn her only fucking son into a killer. Can't even distinguish who the women, who the bitches. Yeah. She broke my nigga, even Jesus can't fix it. Woo. Now my whole nigga got a man up in prison. But quick to tell you, get your back. Bag up, bitch, quit it. Ever heard of Guinness? Yes, sir. Get you spurling. We in court early, early. Don't be acting all girly. Keep that same energy. Don't need any men. You the man. You the father. You the face of many men. Yep. Many ripple ten. Taking L's your whole life. Why the passport pros taking off the next flight? Some thick, some feminine. Rubbing on my shoulders. Be a cold day in hell. Blizzard King try to tell you. A new world is coming, bitch. You better stop sinning. See, God took Kevin. Left your Sorry, ass with Dennis. Somebody type old broad in the chat room. Talking about men, you can't find them. That just means you had your chance, boo. You had your chance, and your chance has passed you by. Your husband done went on to the great beyond. Ha, he's not there looking for you no more. Ha, you done hit one wall. Ha, ha, ha. Somebody type one wall in the chat room. Ha, you done hit two walls. Ha ha! Somebody say three walls! Yeah! What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast. This is Dennis Sperling. I'd like to big, give a big shout out to everybody in the chat room. Baby, hit the number one button if you can hear me clearly. Make sure you do that. As you guys know, uh, co-parenting with the Sperlings air tonight. And so I hope y'all had a chance to check it out right here on this channel. Make sure y'all do that. Uh, but before we get started, good, I want to make sure you guys understand that if you want to contribute, and I know you guys do because you're going to learn a lot. We're going to talk about a lot of things tonight. But the way in which you contribute to me and the work that I do is through my cash app. I'm trying something new here. Something that you all may not know is that um, when you pay the Super Chat, Google takes 30% of whatever you give. So if you give me 10 bucks, they take three bucks. If you give me a hundred bucks, they take, they, they take $30 and that's from everything. What that means is for every six days I work, I really am only getting paid for four. And to me, you know, if you guys want me to have the money, if you wanted Google to have the money, you would give the money straight to Google. If you wanted YouTube to have the money, you would give the money straight to YouTube. And so what I've done is I'm conducting an experiment. I want to see if I can make the same amount of revenue for my time by just cutting the middleman out. All right. So the link to my cash app is right there. All right. 
I don't want you guys. It's, it's almost as if, you know, you're paying me, but Google is pimping me. <laughs> and Uncle D ain't about that pimping. Yeah, tell him, talk about player. No, 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 you ain't going to pimp me. I have uh, got to the point where I'm making a, a significant amount of money, and it's coming from you all. And uh, for the most part, the people that invest in me, the people that show me appreciation are black men. And it would be a waste of my money, waste of your money, if you're trying to play pay a, a, a black-owned on-air personality like myself <laughs> and is going to this huge white corporation. And I'm not knocking, you know, I'm not knocking YouTube. I respect the hustle, but I'm trying to cut out the middleman because that's just how I was raised. You see what I'm saying? And so, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's my talent. And my hard work and my late nights, all they've done is provide uh, a um, basically a platform. But hell, if you know they, they charge too much, maybe they need to reduce their fire. I don't have a problem paying five percent or ten percent, but damn, thirty percent, them's the slave wages. So, nevertheless, that's the cash app right there. Big shout out to my man Quiet Storm. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you, bro. Y'all uh, do that though. You know what I mean? I actually put the cash app. It's pinned to the, uh, it's, it's in the file. So it's, it's right here. Big shout out to my man, Greg Wilson. Thank you so much. My goal is to try to get 40 donations a night. That lets me know I'm doing great. Sometimes it's $5. Sometimes it's $2. Sometimes it's 50 bucks, hundred bucks. Um, so that kind of, that makes it worth it. That keeps, you know, that keeps me definitely entertained and lets me know you guys appreciate me. So far we got two. Uh, I'll do a, uh, I'll do a, a, uh, you show me i'll do a pay for my time at, at, at about the hour break y'all know how this goes you guys have been here and we'll keep doing the same thing but here what i want you guys to understand is when you pay me i reinvest in the black community one thing i do is i do co-parenting with the spurlings the, the broadcast that you guys see playing out every thursday night we're gonna do this every thursday night all the way up until october until all 16 episodes have aired you know what i mean and after you guys you know you know if you like it you like what i'm doing you like what's going on with damn man we're gonna keep it going baby you see what i'm saying because what i'm trying to do is take back thursday nights number one the other thing i'm trying to do is change the image of black men trying to change the image of black men not just for myself but for us and for our sons and our nephews and because I feel like this is the obligation that we have to our ancestors. We cannot allow ourselves to continue to be our reputation to be run into the ground by people who have horrible things to say about us. But for those of you guys who don't know, co-parenting with the Spurlings, the episode tonight was really dynamic. It was about me and my ex-wife working together on issues that you know related to uh our, our our sons and as you guys know she and i don't really see eye to eye some of y'all if since y'all been watching the show you kind of figured out see you all could be <laughs> filed for that divorce i get it <laughs> you see what i'm saying not that she's a horrible person i'm just saying y'all understand so it's a lot of understanding uh in that but nevertheless here's here's we saw episode five tonight this is what's coming up on episode six next thursday Check this out. Coming up next on. I decided I wanted to get a dog for the boy. And now I have two small boys. Is he good with kids? He's, he's wonderful. Okay, great. Dennis, the minute I think that we're on the same page, you show up with the Magic Mike doll. I mean, they're just big beasts of a doll. <sighs> Ty, well, you know, I've been dealing with the boys. They have to, they're about to go to a new school. And uh, Dennis, you'll be do not fine. pull off. I Bye. just want the dog. <laughs> Seriously. Co-parenting with the Spurlings. I left that dog over there with them kids because they needed to understand that they shouldn't be afraid of a dog. I don't care how it look. Nevertheless, that's what I did, man. And so it's a lot. Once the season is all over, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to chop it up with some people who helped me put this thing together. And y'all going to have a, a much better understanding of why I did what I did and all the messages that are in the broadcast. Nevertheless, let me give a big shout out to Simple Shit TV. Big shout out to everybody who came through, man. I can't even it, see. Look, here, here's the thing. Where my wrench mob at? All my wrench mob dudes, man, hit the number one button. Let me know my wrench mob guys are up in here, man. Uh, we're gonna try this, like I said, we're gonna try this cash app thing for a while because I want to see if, if it makes a significant change 
in the revenue that I'm generating. So you guys who contributed to the super chat back in the day, go ahead and do what you do now to this cash app, man. This goes straight to me. Big shout out to Ivy R. Robinson. Thank you, Kevin Whitaker. Willie Abram, thank you so much. Randy Irvin, thank you. Van Rawls, appreciate you, Rub bro. Jerome, Zion Dicey, Steve Opoku, and Greg Wilson, and of course, The Quiet Storm. Y'all, uh, let's do this, man. I want to take the time to kind of go ahead and tell you about what we're talking about tonight. Uh, and for those of you guys who don't know, there's a photograph up on, on the internet. This young lady, her name is Tia Mari. Some of you guys remember her. She had a TV show show with her sister this is her right i want y'all to check this out man this is this lady she for some silly reason decided it was a good idea to divorce her husband um this photograph right caption on this photograph is i don't need a man my kids don't need a home father most important thing is i'm happy and there's nothing selfish about that modern women delusional sacrifice absolutely nothing here's the thing right people aren't really we don't know what she said but the question is you know this photograph and to me a picture is worth a thousand words and when i look at this photograph i'm looking at these children and i'm looking at this woman and the first thing that comes to my mind unfortunately is horrible mom somebody type horrible mom in the chat room and I don't know this woman from Eve, but the first thing that comes to mind, you separated from your husband, who seemed to be a good and decent man, right? For no apparent reason at all. I mean, for what? So you can get back out there in them streets. That that's that's what I see. You know, and it's really just no way of getting around that. I mean, what other reason is it? He, there's no allegations he was fighting with you, beating you up, or none of that. You just up and decided one day that uh, enough of this guy. And now look at these children. I'm just looking at these children. I mean, that photograph. Look at the children. Imagine that. You know, you had a happy family, and then all of a sudden, mom decides she ain't happy no more, and it's, it's just a wrap. On top of that, this is not just something that's germane to this particular woman. This is something that's a phenomenon that's going on everywhere. And this is what we're going to talk about today. This is, to me, a problem that needs to be addressed. And I think it's about time we do it from an academic standpoint and really talk about some real numbers and talk about some real things. Um, that um, the effects, these real life effects that this has on folks. Nevertheless, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a little quick break. We're gonna come back. I'm gonna queue up everything I need to queue up. Y'all hit the number one button, but of course, as you know, we talking about who? Oh, no. if she got a nipples pierced, got ass from here to here, then you know that she's a hoe. If she's on Instagram, her bio is an OnlyFans She's out there selling that thing See, I know you gon' trip Finding out that your chick in Vegas Drunk on a strip with no panties on I know that you gon' say that your chick ain't that way Miami, DR, why but you didn't go Nigga, she's a hoe I think it's time, you know Nigga, she's a ho, ho, ho And I think it's time, you know All right, welcome back to the broadcast. So as you guys know, we're talking about the situation with Tia Mari. I put the photograph up earlier. And to me, a picture is worth a thousand words. I guess I'll put the photograph back up. I don't want to have these poor children out there too, too long. But, um, you know, we'll put this photograph up so we can kind of analyze it a little bit. If you guys are with me, hit the number one button, man. I, I, I want to really take some time to really digest this thing and talk about it. I think 
it's important because there's a big picture here that needs to be truly analyzed, okay? When I look at this photograph, okay, and if I read the quote that's up there, this is somebody else who said this first, you know, and I, I basically just took the photograph as is. It says, I don't need a man, right? I can agree the photograph says that. It says, I don't need a man. Um, my kids don't need a home father because there's no father present in the photograph, okay? And in her mind, there's nothing selfish about that. And what that tells me as the person who originally put that post up it signifies just how delusional modern women are, right? And they're willing to sacrifice absolutely nothing. Now, my thing is, I bet, you know, and if we were to poll those children, if we were to talk to those children, I bet they feel differently about the need for, to, of having their father in the home. And I'm going to go ahead and put this photograph up so you guys can see what we're talking about here. All right, let's 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 get it up. Bam. Okay. There it is. You know, how, how, does the ch how do the children feel about that? Right? How do they? I bet they feel different. Different. But their selfish mom doesn't care. Now, again, that statement may not have come from Tia Maori. But look at the picture, though. Look at the photograph. Look at this picture. with the mother in the center, right? She got her singleness, I don't need no man dress on. This is what elderly, rebellious, lonely women look like. This woman is almost 50 years old. She's 40 plus. Clearly this photograph, this picture is incomplete. Where's the father? She's trying to oversell this faux aesthetic of dignity, which only magnifies the void. The void of not having a man in that photograph. No woman who is with her husband and with her children will say that having children and separating them and co-parenting is a better option. I even say that, and I have a show called Co-Parenting with the Sperlins. We should never celebrate children growing up in a home without a father and a mother. Neither of those are an accomplishment. And I'm telling you from my perspective as a father, When I look at this photograph, the first thing I see, who dressed this boy? Either a woman or some gay dude dressed this guy. That's what I can tell. Because see, the first thing is a father would have made sure this boy's sleeves were cuffed up. You see these sleeves? Your sleeves are too long and your pants are too high. A man instructs his sons on how to stand in an official portrait. <laughs> and on another note, why is a 40-some-year-old woman dressed like she's going to the club as opposed to dressed like she's taking a family picture? I feel bad for this little son, this little boy on the left. I feel bad for him. Look at the young brother's face. Does he look happy? Look at this little girl over here. She look like she don't know what's going on. Her taking a new picture of her separated family is disgusting and puts a dark cloud over her whole past and future. What she need to be doing is trying to get her husband back and apologize for every embarrassing statement that she made during the divorce, calling it a graduation. What a fool. 
She's just reinforcing the nonsense in her heart. She knew she messed up. And now she's trying to activate that strong woman mode to save face. But this picture still looks incomplete. Somebody type incomplete in the chat room. It looks fractured. She says she's happy, but she sacrificed her children's spiritual and physical and emotional well-being for home fleeting emotional satisfaction. And this is something that's happening throughout the United States and all these Western civilizations. Women are destroying people's lives for their own selfish desires. A single mother and kids is not a family. Mm -mm. That collection of people does not deserve a title. It's simply a single mother and some kids. She broke, in, she broke up their home. The home is broken. The head of the house is missing. She's not the head. She's out of order. She's not the center. Does she look happy in that photograph? Do her children look happy in that photograph? To me, it looks like they're about to go to war. Look at them. This, this, photo, this won't age well. Not at all. And sadly, we won't see the results of this ill-advised experiment until we finally see the outcome of these children and how they grow up. They're the ones that take the biggest hit of anyone in the family. 72% of black babies are born to unmarried mothers today. That's according to government statistics. I'm not making this up. You know I don't make up stuff here. This is a Pew Research report. I'm going to share it with you. And if you look this over, you will find what, I, what, what I've determined here. In 2021, there was about 4.27 million black families in the United States with a single mother. I grew up in the 1990s. And back then, there were about 3.4 million black families with single mothers. So now you got like 25% more, almost. You had a 25% increase, so it's going to be that much worse. And we talking about families, not individuals. We talking about families, not individuals. So you got a cluster of individuals together. So that's a lot of families. Check these numbers out. 47% of U.S. adults say single women raising children on their own is generally a bad thing for society. <laughs> and that's an increase in 7%. It was 40% back in 2018. Now in 2021, 47% of people are saying it's a bad thing. I know. We all know. But why is it that we keep doing it in the black community? Now, check this out. As you would imagine, views on single motherhood differ from one race, uh, uh, somewhat by race and ethnicity. What do y'all think that means? What do you think? Who, uh, uh, who, who? Take a guess. What race thinks is not that big of a deal? But let me start this off. About half of white and Asian adults, 49%, say single women raising children alone is bad for society. About half of them believe that, compared with a smaller, in Hispanic, 
39% of Hispanics don't think it's a problem. I want to explain that number. When you go to South America and Central America, the Caribbean, Latin America, a lot of those women have children out of wedlock. That's one of the biggest, best kept secrets of the passport, bro. Somebody type passport bros in the chat room. Listen, I'm going to give you the truth. I'm always going to tell you the truth. A lot of these women in these South American countries have children out of wedlock. A lot of these women have kids. Most of the women I dated in the DR had children out of wedlock. Uncle D, not you, you dating a baby mama, yeah. But what about all the issues up here with baby mama? It's not the baby mama-ism that's a problem. The problem is we live in a matriarchy. We in the United States amongst black Americans live in a matriarchy. Those children in those cultures are raised in a patriarchy. So it don't matter if a woman has children out of wedlock. She's not in charge of the society. So that's why you don't have those children down there who are born to single mothers having the issues. They still have to adhere to, adhere to what the men say. Here in the United States, not only are the women single mothers, but they are raised in a matriarchy. That's why they out of line. That's why there's a problem. I know ain't nobody told you that because they haven't traveled enough. You had to figure that out on your own. Forty-six percent of black people, black adults, say single women raising children alone is bad for society. Well, damn! If it's that many people saying it's bad, well, hell, you got fifty-four percent of people saying it's not bad. <laughs> Check this number out: since twenty eighteen, white adults have had the largest increase in the share saying this is bad for society. They were at what, 41%? Now they're at 48% because it's starting to hit them. Gender is strongly related to a perspective of single women raising alone. What do you guys think that is? What do you think that means? Well, as you could imagine, the majority of men, 59%, say single motherhood is bad for society, whereas only 37% of women think it's bad for society. So you got 63% of women thinking it's good for society or it don't matter. That's why they keep doing it. Women are more likely than men to say women raising children on their own generally doesn't make much of a difference for society. That's a lie. But what we do know is both men and women agree that it's bad for society or that number has increased since 2018, 9% for men, 7% for women. So what does that tell me when I look at those numbers? Are y'all with me? Because I'm about to land this helicopter right on top of your roof. What that tells me is something that I've been saying for a while. Black women choose to be single mothers. They want to be single mothers. They don't see anything wrong with it. That's what that tells me. It tells me what? That black women choose to be single mothers and they don't see anything wrong with it. They see family structure as just them and them kids. See, black women want to keep the community as a matriarchy. The matriarchy gives them power and control. And the only way they can have power and control is to maintain the children. They keep the children. They keep society giving them resources. They keep men giving them resources. They get attention. They get to dictate the norms and the culture of the next generation of children. Makes sense. They see marriage as an undue burden. 
What do black women call marriage these days? What are they equated with? Slavery is what they're equated with. Modern women feel like they're the only ones sacrificing their happiness for everyone else. And who do they mean by everyone else? They feel like the only ones happy in a marriage are men and children. Well, damn. Them your children and that's your husband. But nevertheless, they don't want to make that sacrifice because, again, they feel like everybody else is happy as if they've never spoken with a man, a married man. Go talk to some of these married men and ask them if they're happy. Are you married men happy? <laughs> you guys think married men are happy? Nevertheless, these women are under the impression that these men are happy. And that's why they choose this. Modern women think that marriage benefits men and children. And they question what benefits women actually receive. Right? Now, the funny thing is you don't hear single fathers going around saying they don't need a woman and their kids don't need a mother, do you? Only African-American women here in the United States provoke this level of dysfunction. And look, I know, y'all looking at Tia Mori. Don't give me that crap that she's mixed or she's biracial. I don't want to hear that nonsense. She identifies as a foundational black American woman. She's part of the sisterhood. Her mother is black. Uh-huh. And most likely, that's where she got her misandry from. Nevertheless, Tia Mari is expressing the sentiment of millions of black single mothers. It is a problem in our community. It is a reason for all the chaos and dysfunction we have in our community. And these women are bringing the chaos. They are wrecking homes and raising criminals who become a harm to society. And they need to be held accountable. Taking away the financial support. Why would we give financial to support to someone who intentionally wrecks the home without good cause? And what do I mean by financial support? Are y'all with me? Is this above? Y'all want to talk about something else? Let me know. I think this is important. And I think this is going to be more of a problem for you men who decide to get married in the future or who decide to stay here. I think it's a problem, and it's something we need to start thinking about seriously. It's something we need to begin to talk to women and black women in particular about. You need to change your mindset. I gave you the stats. Over 50% of them think it's, it's a good thing. That's a problem. So what do we do to show them it's not a good thing? Take away the financial support. Welfare. Let's get that out the door. Food stamps. No more child support. No more daycare vouchers. No more child care tax credit for unmarried people. No more alimony. That would disincentivize them from acting so reckless with their marriages and with their vaginas. Because then they'll know they won't have a safety net or a cushion to fall on. And guess what ends up happening? She won't be able to take care of them kids. So where's she going to send them back to? Back to the father. And the statistics show that a father raising his children alone do about as well as a mother and father together. Isn't that amazing? Now let me say something this. I want to give an applause to my brothers. Black men... Say it again, black men. Somebody type black men in the chat room. Black men in the black men are already doing their part by refusing to marry these women and exercising their passport options. 51% of black men are unmarried and don't have children. They're exercising, they're refusing to get married. We were the first ones to go red pill, as they used to say. Back in the 1960s, we saw female nature when they left us and abandoned us for what the government was offering. And now we're exercising our passport options. So I congratulate you, brothers, for your effort. Keep on winning, brothers. Keep turning those cold shoulders. Keep boycotting these single mothers 
from the matriarchy. And guess what else you see happening? You see the government doing its part and cutting them off. Somebody type Florida in the chat room. What did Florida just do? Florida just banned lifetime alimony. A couple of years back, they instituted 50-50 custody. That's the presumption. The presumption is the child should be with the father 50% of the time. Isn't that wonderful? Tennessee has got a law on the books where they are banning, or I'm sorry, they're making paternity fraud a crime. Did you know that 30% of the children who are, who, who are, well, let me say this, 30% of the men who test themselves when they think there's a problem, when they get the DNA test, 30% of those men find out they're not the fathers of the children. That came from a study where 500,000 men who are ordered to take DNA tests, of that 500,000, 30% learned that they weren't the father. And so now paternity fraud, at least in Tennessee, is going to be a crime. The great state of Texas has capped child support. I believe the most you can pay for one child in Texas is $2,500. Not 25% of what you earn. You could be a multimillionaire. This is outstanding. Big shout out to my man, Socially Speaks. Woo, that's a big one, bro. Thank you so much for that super, for that cash app. I appreciate that. And thank you for my man, Ron. Appreciate you too, man. But listen, even the government is starting to crack down it because this is not good for society. So what is this photo? That's why I told you earlier, this photograph will not, add, this photograph will not age well because we are no longer willing to incentivize the destruction of Western civilization. All of us see that. What are the effects of being raised by a single mother? We're going to deal with that when we come back, man. Y'all make sure y'all do what you got to do. Hit the number one button. I shall return shortly. Bam. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. When I make it happy, happy. I'll be, I'll be alright. I'm gonna I'll pull out my long white rope. So gonna wrap all these rounds. When I make it to heaven, I'm cheering. When I make it to heaven, when I make it to heaven, say that I.
like that, man. I, I found that on the internet. I said I had to make that part of my broadcast, man. That's just beautiful. Just listening to that good old, uh, good old harmonizing right there, man. But uh, welcome back to the broadcast. I want a big shout out to y'all. Somebody type praise Moses in the chat room. Big shout out to my man Terrence Patterson. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, fam. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to everybody else who came through with the Super Chats in a minute. But we left off. We're talking about this photograph, man. A picture is worth a thousand words. Somebody type a thousand words in the chat room, man. Right? For years, for decades, we incentivized these single mothers to have children. And now it's become a thing. Right? And we, those of us who grew up, we know the effects of being raised by single mothers. Many of you brothers were raised by single mothers. And being raised by a single mother, it has the following effects on children. And again, I'm not making this up. And I don't really care if you're offended. I use these abstracts growing up with a single mother uh, and life satisfaction in adulthood, the test of mediating and moderating factors. Here's another article, The Psychological and Social Effects of Single Parenting uh, in a Child's Life, right? And what, is he, what do these articles say? It says, children in single mother households are more likely to suffer from less effective guardianship and a higher likelihood of family distress and conflict. What does that mean? What does that mean, boys, fellas? It means you fighting all the damn time in the house and you don't feel safe. That's what the hell it means. It means you're not looked after. Less effective guardianship. Your mama working all the time. You at home all the time by yourself. Getting in the crap. You know what you do. I know what I did. I committed all kinds of crimes and petty crimes when I was a little child. Stealing and just being a terror. And I wasn't the only one. And when they say family distress, y'all know what that means. There ain't no men in the house, fellas. So you got a bunch of weak men who can't control the women. What happens family distress during those holidays? The reason why you stop going home, why you stop, they mad because the brothers ain't going to the cookouts no more. Why? Because we don't want to see that family distress. And we don't want to see that family conflict. That's what happens when you get a bunch of single mother raised children and a bunch of single mothers in the same location. There's no men to maintain order. So there are real life effects. What else do we got to say? Children may get a sense of insecurity from home, which affects how they interact with the outside world. You got a bunch of insecure children out there. What happens when a girl is insecure? She looking for security in all the wrong places. She's looking for somebody to love her. Why do we have a whole generation? Why do we have a country full of whores looking for love in all the wrong places? Are y'all listening to me? You got a bunch of insecure little girls out there trying to get the security they need by using their sex, by using their bodies as lures. Them daddy issues are typically, I didn't have a daddy in my house issue. And then we all know what happens when you get a bunch of insecure boys out in the world who grow to men trying to prove themselves to be men. Any little mild slight is considered disrespect worthy of taking somebody's life. We see that, don't we? Don't we? We see a bunch of men trying to prove their manhood by how many women they can bear. And so what does that leave us with? A bunch of children out of wedlock. Diseases, broken hearts. That's what we get. What's another effect, according to this growing up with a single mother uh, article? Children have low expectations from the people around them. 
All they've seen is poverty. People know that women who have children out of wedlock, single mothers, more likely to live impoverished, more likely to hang around people who don't have high expectations for themselves. So how can you have high expectations for people around you when those people around you are lowly? Here's another one. Y'all want to know why the marriage rate is down? Not only is it because we don't like the laws, but growing up in a single mother home, children may be unable to maintain a happy, healthy marriage. Why? Because they haven't experienced living with both parents. They don't even know how that works. How do you teach a young girl who's never had a man in the house how to be feminine and how to submit to a, a, a strong masculine man when all she's ever had to do is typically argue with her mama? How do you teach a young man who's never had a masculine man in his household and watch him interact with a feminine, submissive woman? How do they interact in the household? That boy don't know nothing. He don't know what being a man about. Yeah, he might have a big Johnson and some big muscles. But he just doesn't get it. It's like raising a pit bull around a bunch of ducks and you wonder why he can't fight. All he can do is quack, quack. That's all he got. The main analysis of this article showed a significant association of the different childhood family settings with general life satisfaction. What does that mean? Depending on how you were raised, both parents, single parent, between the ages of 1 and 14, which are crucial years, they reported significantly a lower general life satisfaction than the group raised by both parents. In other words, they're not happy. That's why these kids look like this. They ain't happy. Now, certain groups of black women act like they're completely oblivious to the, to the likely outcome of more decades of this I'm strong, independent, and don't need a man trend, which has been going on far too long. Yet they stupidly believe this nonsense that they come up with, which has done nothing but assassinate the family. These women are traitors. Why do I say that? Such a strong word, Uncle D. Because they're the only group of women on the planet who are against their men. They're self-sabotaging agents. You got this girl right here, Miss Maury. She got a twin brother. Now, this one right here was married to a black man. Her twin sister, I mean, not twin brother, her twin sister's married to a white man. You never heard her publicly disrespect her white husband, have you? And that man... From what I see, he did not very nice to her. And it's like I've said and what other men have said, Western black women, American black women are quick to switch their demeanor when it comes to a white man. And that's nothing more than the bed wench phenomenon. And it's always been like that. And we need to call that out whenever we see it and not be afraid. Look at her son. He looks browbeaten and miserable. I see on his face a young man is ready to run away or rebel or lash out or explode in rage against his mother. That's what I see. She too big. He too big for her, her, to, him to, her to whoop. To all you young men to see this, I want you to look at this. If you plan on having children in a family, 
Don't do it with women who think like her. Otherwise, you will suffer and so will your kids. Your sons will probably grow up to be moist. And your daughters will probably grow up to be mannish and masculine. I don't have any answers for you. I can suggest you try a new country with respectful, modest, family-oriented women. Why? Because at least you'll know how you should be tweet, treated. You'll know what a fit, feminine, beautiful, respectful woman is. And then when you come back here to the United States, you'll realize these modern American women aren't that. Get your passport. Somebody type, get your passport in the chat room. Now, I read off a bunch of statistics, and when you consider those statistics on children's success, both with and without fathers, you can see that this photograph and all the other women who appreciate this and who reflect this and who live this lifestyle, they're selfish. And what they're doing is they're literally hanging themselves with a rope, a rope they were given. And they made that choice. All these women could be married. But they made the choice to be single. 70% of divorces are initiated by women. And you brothers need to get away from these type of women as fast as possible. I want to get back to this young boy. By his height and age, he's probably a teenager. I give him about a year, year and a half before he says, I want to live with my daddy. It look, when I look at this young man's picture, and I'm only going by this picture, it looks like he's over all this attention seeking that she's doing. And if he's intelligent, he knows what his mother is doing is wrong. She might be happy, but those kids don't look happy. I feel for those children. They were all smiles with that family pic that we saw some years back. with their daddy. Y'all remember that? Huh? Y'all remember that picture when they, the, the family, family photo? How happy the children look. I'm going to pull it up. I want you to see. Let's see if we can pull it up real quick. Somebody pull it up and put the link of the picture in the chat room. Since we just analyzing photos. We'll get it later. I want to get back to this broadcast. I'm looking at this photograph right here, man. And I look at this young boy's face, and I'm thinking, you know what? First of all, he probably can't stand her. He probably, yeah, that's about the age when boys get, I know you ladies, you know. Y'all think your sons love you. But at a certain age, your sons stop wanting to hear your voice. They start ignoring you. They don't want to hear your voice. They're tired of you. They're tired of all that motherly love. And so at this point, this little boy probably can't stand his mother. He needs his mother. He might love his mother, but he don't want to be around her no more. This is when they start hitting on you. You know, fellas, y'all had some mothers hit you, put you out the house, threaten to call the police on you. Try to get other men to come in. You need to respect your mama. You know the simps come in. You need to respect your mama. That's your mama. Here's my favorite. You only get one mama. Okay, you only get one father too. So what? She's nagging. And boys, just like grown men, get tired of all that. Nagging. 
and the manipulation. You love me, nah, 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 all that. Son, husband. This young man's face, face speaks volumes. It's written all over his face. Hell, he looked depressed, and the little girl looked like she don't know what's going on. These two kids are bound to rebel against this woman when they get older. But, you know, at least she can afford therapy, rich. But look at the way this boy is dressed, man. Is that her son, her girlfriend, or her daughter? That's what I want to know. Look at this little boy. This is what feminization looks like. Either this boy is going to be rebellious or feminine. Look at that. He look angry. And I've seen and heard about videos of him before expressing his annoyance with his mother. That's that effeminate son-husband energy right there. And it's going to hit him hard later when he get in the streets. See, it's all good to be sitting up under your mother and inheriting her mannerisms until you get beat down in the street because you offended some other man with his bitch-ass ways and manner of, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're gonna start wilding out from lack of masculinity. That's what they do. The masculinity keeps teenage boys in their place. Without it, they start going crazy. There was an experiment, not an experiment, but there was an, uh, uh, Af a certain section, I believe in Kenya, where they had the, the, the poachers had killed off all the mature male elephants. And the young teenage elephants went crazy. Now look at this picture in that picture. Look at that. Which one of these groups of people look happier? By show of hands. Huh? Shout out to my man Simple Shit TV for sending this to me. Look at this. Who look happier? Huh? Let me put this up. Let me, let me reroute this. I'm going to get this back up for y'all. There it is. Which one of these teams look happier? Huh? Who house you want to go visit? This house right here? Hell, he can't even love his mama no more. He's so pissed off with her. That's why he's leaning. That's why he's standing up. At least here, he's leaning on his mom. She leaning into him. You got dad over here holding up the background. He mad. He not mad here. Look at the difference. Look at the suit. This, look, hold on a minute. <laughs> look how this little boy is dressed. Looking like a strong dyke from West Hollywood. And now look at this picture. He got a nice suit on with some blue. And his pants are fit. And it's a straight cut, American cut. With a tie on. You see the difference? Dad picked his suit. Mom or some gay dude picked his suit. I'm just saying, look at it. Look at the little girl. She focused, looking cute with a little pink on. Here she coming out of shoe. Mom is trying to hold things down. She got the little power foot step forward like she Beyonce, I'm in charge. Look at this, whole different dynamic. You can't even be feminine if you're raising children uh, by yourself, ladies, because you have to be masculine because the masculinity has to be present in the household. Look at this shit, man. Look at this goddamn Alice the Good. Y'all remember Popeye and Popeye would fight those like, Alice the goon creatures and they would have that hair sticking up 
or them old Bugs Bunny cartoons where the aliens would come to town and they had that little thing at the top of their head. That's what this looked like. And see, let me tell you something. When this little boy, when he starts getting in trouble, it's going to be his kid. Y'all know how this goes. He's your kid when he gets in trouble or when it's time to pay child support. As far as she's concerned, it's her kid all the rest of the time. It's always a lack of a father figure that put these kids in these emotional, volatile states. And that's why they end up in jail and in prison or in these psychological wards. I've heard of some mothers putting their kids in the juvie, a group home, but foster care because being a parent has become inconvenient to them and they hot girl summer lifestyle and they don't want to get the children up to the father because then they feel like he won. And at no call, even at the expense of the children, they never want the father to win. These are the same mothers that won't even visit the kids when they're in these group homes. And when they, what happens when they get to these places? They medicate these children. They house them. They just become part of the system. What is she showing her son right here? Let me tell you what he's learning from his mother. He learning that hoes ain't loyal. That's what he learning. Somebody type this. Somebody type Chris Brown in the chat room. He learning hoes ain't loyal. His mama is teaching them this. His first impression upon women is no matter how good you are, no matter how handsome you are, no matter how good of a husband you are, your, your woman still might leave you. And where did he get that from? Not out in them streets. He see that in his mama. Just like many of y'all saw that in your mama. That's why you don't trust these 304s now. Because you see how many men your mama brought through the goddamn house when you was a little boy. Every other year, you got a new stepdaddy taking you up to the elementary school. Who is that? That's your new daddy. Damn. That's the third one this year. That's what most of y'all mothers taught y'all. That's why you don't, that's why you be looking at these black women sideways. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Tell the truth, shame the devil. I'm telling you the truth. You know, I'm speaking the damn truth. Bam. That boy look mad as hell. And then she got the nerve. Look at the difference in these photographs. Here she covered up from head to toe. And look at this picture. She like she going to the club. And she taking him with her. He looked like, damn, mom, why you gotta wear that revealing outfit? And it's my understanding she was asking him how she looks. That annoys boys, ladies. Your son don't want to look at your rotten ass uh, half dress. That's your son, not your husband. You need to set boundaries. Stop asking your sons if you look pretty. Stop asking them to uh, uh, weigh your beauty. That shit is incestuous. It is fucking nasty. All the goddamn time. You come in there with your, your skirt hiched up your ass and you want to ask your son how you look. That's nasty. You look like a whore, mom. That's how you look. You see little boys doing it all the time. They mama go trying to go out the house with, with, with some tight ass clothes on. And the little baby like, mama don't go. They trying to grab you by the hand. He three, four, five years old and bringing your nasty hot butt back in the house. Y'all see it happening all the time. That's the natural protective instincts of little boy. In other words, I can't protect your ass if you out there acting like a thought mom. 
You making my job harder, mom. That's why this little boy looking like that. Many of y'all had that same experience. It's Friday night. Your silly ass mama just got paid and she going out with a hot girl dress. It's 97. <laughs> For some of y'all, it's 87. For other y'all, it's 2007. And she taking her hot ass out on a date with something too tight to be right. Damn it. And you like, mom, you going out like that? Damn. Your little funky friends, look, that's your mom. Yeah, your mama fine. His friends looking at your mama like a sexual object. See the difference? This is what single motherhood does. This is a married woman. This is a single mother. Just look at the look. Natural, no makeup. Now she got all this eyeshadow on, looking like a succubus. But look at this boy. Fellas, I'm going to ask you a question. See this young man right here? If this young man showed up at your front door, would you feel safe if your daughter went out on a date with this young man? Where you fellas at? Now, don't get me wrong. We don't want buff-ass 17-year-olds <laughs> and 16-year-olds coming to our door. But you, would you feel safe with your little daughter his hair probably longer than hers. This cotton swab, bless his heart. It's not his fault. But would you feel safe with this young man taking your daughter out? Even if it's just up the street, walking down the street to get some ice cream. That's what I'm saying. And so when you be honest with yourself, you can feel the feminine energy. Look how he dressed. It, 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 you know, I'm just telling you what it looked like to me. I got sons, family. I'm telling you what it looked like. Now, I'm going to tell you something. As soon as this husband moves on and gets him another relationship and she sees him happy with another woman, watch the smear campaign. Watch, watch what happened. Suddenly, he's going to become abusive. He was a cheater. You know what to do. And she's going to be sick to her stomach when she sees him step out with a new girlfriend while she has no boyfriend lined up for herself, at least not a man of any high quality. Who going to date this with two kids, 40-something years old with two kids, and this is this the best job you can do with your kids? Oh, hell no. Happens all the time. Now, the cold part about it, just because of where this brother is, most likely he's going to end up with a white woman or a Latina. And if his new girlfriend is white, shit, this, this young lady is going to go ape shit crazy. And if he does get a black woman, she probably going to be from behind the scenes, a producer, screenwriter, uh, something like that. And she's probably going to be younger. And that's the other thing. She's going to be a lot younger and better looking than the ex-wife. Because that ain't going to be hard to do. Not with this bad built broad right here. With these furry shoulders on. Another thing is, without having the burden of this woman in your ear all the time. Unhappy. Holding you back. This man is going to do better in his career. See, let me tell you something. Here's a big secret. If you do it right, listen, the thing about divorce is if you do it right, it gives you your freedom. Somebody type freedom in the chat room. It gives you your freedom back and you become more productive if you do it right. Some of y'all don't do it right. Shout out to all the guys who get that pre-divorce -con pre consultation with Uncle D. Shout out to all you guys. I teach, I teach my guys how to do divorce right so they can bounce back like a rubber band. Bam, back on the scene. This woman right here, when this man really finally decides to move on, she'll be seen as bitter, regretful, and she'll probably regret her choice of divorce, but it'll be too late. 
She destroyed her marriage to be like her idol, who's still married, Beyonce. Look at this woman. She got that modern, angry, feminist look. She got that bull ring in her nose. And it's funny, I bet on I bet she got a Pookie and a Ray Ray on the on the on the roster right about now. Because you know Pookie smash anything. They claim they want normal masculinity as opposed to toxic masculinity, but some kind of way they always end up picking up a Pookie and a Ray Ray. And then when they get used and abused, they want to throw them under the bus. See what Kim Kardashian is doing? Talking about she she regrets dating old Pete. You know, old Pete, the little white boy Pete that was using a Rolls Royce. If she only knew how stupid she looks. Baby, you gave your husband away and your kids' future away for the streets. That's what you did. Somebody type for the streets in the chat room. She wanted to have a hot girl summer and leave her good man to be out there in them streets. And all these women wait till they're in their 30s and in 40s to embrace their, their sexiness. That's a delusional woman. She just wrecked her home. Her kids will never forgive her. This is a goofy broad right here. That's what that is. She's delusional. She thought there was going to be legions of men waiting to shoot their shot at some middle-aged, bad-built broad. She's going to be posting videos of her crying in the car after a while. Just like every other 304 boss chick, single mama, straggle-daggle, who's online cheering on, that's right, girl, yeah! Right? That's what's going to happen. Her son is already telling her, Mama, you're not built for this current dating scene, Mom. You're just embarrassing me. Why are you posting photographs like this at your age, Mom? It's obvious you're not built for the current dating market, Mom. Things have changed in 20 years since we was kids, Mom. Hell, she looked like her box is born. These girls these days is doing backflips and hanging from the ceilings. They ain't got no rules. They do everything. And you trying to compete with that? Shit. You don't stand an igloo's chance in hell, ma'am. What she did was her big favor. Uh, she did a big favor for her ex-husband. That's what she did. Remember, she graduated. What did she graduate from, No, Baby, you graduated from wife to good time, girl. That's what you did. You hustling in reverse. Now, let me break something down for y'all, and I want y'all to truly sit back and understand. We about to go into a master's level understanding because... This whole situation is about control. I want y'all to listen. Okay? Now, she left her husband because she wanted freedom, right? Right? That's why she left her husband. She was tired of being oppressed by her husband. She wanted the freedom to be able to do whatever she wants, whenever she wants. Do y'all honestly think she can do whatever she wants, whenever she wants with this little girl and that boy? And that she constantly got to sit with? No. You can't be free and have kids at the same time. I'm a single dad. I ain't. I can't go everywhere. I got kids at the house. Sometimes the nanny don't show up. Sometimes you don't have a babysitter. You can't do what you want to do. Hell, and most of these custody agreements say if you spend more than 24 hours away from the house, then the other person automatically can get custody. You forfeit your custody, your possession time. So she can't do everything she want to do. So then what does she really get? 
What is this really about? You said you want your freedom. You want to be able to do what you want to do. But clearly, if you got possession of the kids, you can't. So what? why don't you just give full custody to the father then? And in that way, you can go be as free as you want to. Why would she do that? Doesn't that make more sense, family? But it's not about the children. And a lot of y'all know that this is not about the children. It's about control. Somebody type control in the chat room. See, the matriarchy is about power and control. Patriarchy typically was when the men had the children. Whoever has the children has control. And so here in the United States, the matriarchy, because of the law, the woman has control and power. She needs to be a mother in control of her children to be validated by the rest of the matriarchal members. And to maintain control and validation, she needs to have possession of her kids. Without possession, she'll be ridiculed. Y'all know what women say about women who lose their kids. She'll be ridiculed. She'll be mocked. She'll be dismissed. And on top of that, she won't be able to reap the benefits of the protection of the government and the sisterhood, right? <laughs> the sisterhood would be looking at her sideways. See? Her social status will be nil and none. So this is not about what's in the best interest of the children. It's not about her having her own freedom. It's about her having control and the father being pushed away and they have no control. She's treating these kids like property. That's what they are to her. Otherwise, she would do what's in their best interest, not what's in her best interest. But see, here's the problem. Listen. Somebody type listen in the chat room. Raising children as proper as property anchors a codependent mindset in them. And that's the perfect setup for all kinds of insecurities. And it makes it easy for them to be controlled by the system that we live in. Debt, slavery, anxiety, and depression. That's what that does. That's what those studies were saying. Y'all wasn't listening. Raising your children like property, creating that codependent mindset in your children, it takes young boys out of their nature as men and puts them into a fearful competition mindset with other black men, especially for black boys. Black men who should be their natural allies. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. If that Negro look at you crazy, man, he your enemy, y'all ready to fight it out. That's because of that codependent mindset. That's because of those insecurities. That's what the study said. I came to these conclusions based on my own understanding and life experiences. But that's what they're talking about. Instead of teaching boys how to build and cooperate with other men or how to compete with other men in a proper way, you teach them to look down upon and despise other men, especially black men with our particular set of, our niche set of problems. And they also learn to do what? If I'm looking down on other men, other black men, who else am I looking down on? Myself. See, in that article, it said they had low expectations for the people around them. But what that also means is they have low expectations for themselves. How better off would you boys have been, you young men who are here listening, how much better off would you have been if had you had a father in your corner rooting you on and telling you to go forward? Huh? You want to see an example? Look at my sons. I'm their secret weapon. That's the power of a father. Some of y'all have seen my video. I know what I say is true. Because I see it play out. I got sons this age. What this young woman did, what Tia, what Ms. Maury did, was she sacrificed her marriage for her temporary happiness. Somebody type happiness in the chat room. And when this happiness wears off, she's going to be old and alone and full of regrets. Because them kids ain't even want to have nothing to do with her. When them streets stop returning her phone call, that's when fear sets in. That's usually about the time when she hit that last wall, right before that cliff. Boom. 
That's at the point they want to look around and proclaim they are no good men. Well, hell, you ran them off. <laughs> you ran them off or you didn't want them. See, their miserable mindset leads to their own crash and burn. Unfortunately, and this is what we're talking about today, unfortunately, they impact the children negatively as well as the community at large. And that's what we're dealing with in the black community. Selfishness, like the, what Miss Maury has exhibited, has destroyed the black community and has done so for decades. Why? Because you got a bunch of women who spend their life chasing happiness and they rarely find it. All they end up doing is hurting those around them in pursuit of this happiness. This is a fool. This fool wrote off her relationship because of her feelings. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. What did he say? F your happiness. These women have destroyed their own families. They show that they don't care about anyone else but themselves. The lies that they tell in an attempt to justify it just add up to nothing more than delusion. Selfishness is a powerful thing. To them, the most important thing is I'm happy. Not the kids, not the family, not the husband, me. And we've gotten to the point now, black American women are their own race now. How long is that going to last? They love to get out there and say, uh, I sacrifice everything for my children. What did you really sacrifice? being locked down in a relationship, something you equate with slavery. What did you really sacrifice, ladies? Another penis appointment, maybe 10? Is that what you missed out on? Huh? Penis appointments, because that's all it is, just an increased body count. Women are constantly saying, all I do for my kids, I do all this for my kids. And the truth is, what do you really do for your kids? You'll do anything for them except give them their daddy. That's what? The most important thing. Like the rest of these delusional women and the problems getting worse, she thinks showing the world with this photograph that she don't need a man. Let me move my brother out the way again. Showing the world that she don't need a man. That her kids don't need a father in the home. Is going to make men want her more. Or make other women look up to her. True, there are certain women who will look up to you. But not the married ones. Not the ones that know better. Not the ones that see you for the fool you are. That's just more proof that women don't know who men are. Every man looking at this, every man with good sense looking at this is saying, you're going to be alone and miserable, ma'am. And the truth is, at this point, men, modern men are collectively Tired of this foolishness. It's getting to the point they don't want to sleep with women like this. Now, there are simps that are deal with women like this on a regular basis. And they don't care that these women are actually disrespecting them. All they want to do is be a hero. But at the end of the day, women don't even want men like that anyway. They just tolerate them. Somebody type horrible moms in the chat room. Whether you like what I have to say or not, 
the I don't need a man in the house phenomenon is something that's been going on in the black community for decades now. We see the effect of it. What I did tonight, fellas, was I examined it and I gave you lots of information to use so you can go home and think. Plenty of ammunition. If you didn't have it before, now you have it. Don't make this popular. You women who are out there thinking about pushing your man away so you can have your happiness, so you can go make some schedule, some new penis appointments. You're a horrible mom. And I want to be the first to tell you that. And that's on behalf of all the men who are raised by single mothers. Some of you women don't understand why men who are raised by single mothers are vehemently against dating single mothers, especially here in the United States, who are against dealing with single mothers in any sort of romantic relationship because we know how horrible you are because we saw it up, her, up close and personal. That's why. There's no mystery there. Nevertheless, I've been here for about an hour and 30 minutes. My cash app is right there up on the, on the page. And it's time for y'all to pay me for my time. Why? Because I spent a lot of time doing research. I spent a lot of time putting this together succinctly so you can understand it, so you could be moved. If you heard something tonight that moved you, if you learned something tonight, well, then my work is done, and it's time for you to pay me for my time. And until then, you're going to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. The cash app is right there. We need to get these cash apps up. I want at least 15 cash apps uh, close there to it. Pay me for my time. See?
the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus cover me under the blood. Under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus, you may cover me under the blood. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. Now when me feel like me, I go break up. Put the blood on me face just like a makeup. In the morning when me wake up. And the blood that Jesus me take up yeah. And when me feel like me heart break up Put the blood for me face just like a makeup Under the blood Under the blood Under the blood Jesus cover me Under the blood Jesus you be cover me Under the blood Under the blood me say me under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus cover me under the blood. Under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus, you may cover me. I'll be alright. I'll be alright. When I make it. When I make it. But I want to make sure I give a big shout out to everybody who came through. Stephen Opuku, thank you so much. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and put our mood music on so we can play our little mood music and give a shout out to our people who came through. We still need three more super chats uh, to get this thing finished, this thing off. But uh, I want to make sure I acknowledge my folks, man. Thank you so much, Steve Opoku. Thank you, James Lee, for the super chat. And I'm sorry, Cash App, $5. James Lee, two bucks. Alvin Holden, $10. Man, GC sent $5. Shea, 2882 sent 20 bucks. Thank you so much, fam. Time and morning. Thank you so much for the $5 cash app. My man, Ben Sicko. That's what's up. Cisco. Thank you for the $10 super chat. Lee Harris. Thank you for the five bucks. LaDexter Vincent. That's a boss ass name right there. LaDexter. You don't mess with nobody named LaDexter. Dexter plus a cap in your ass and hit you with that right hook. <laughs> Shout out to my man, LaDexter Vincent. A big shout out to Cold Corners. Thank you so much, Randy Urban. Big shout out to you for the uh, $10 super chat. PJ Throwaway, thank you for the $10 super chat. Abdullah Ali Abin Muti, thank you so much, fam, for the five bucks. To John, thank you for the $15 super chat cash app. Kevin Stovall, thank you for the five bucks. Man, Terrence Patterson, thank you so much, fam. Socially Speaks, thank you for that $500, baby. Big shout out to my man, Woo! Socially speaks, that five hundred, you get to rock and roll, baby. Big shout out to you for that big five hundred, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. 
And yeah, man, I sent you a response to your email, so you just hit me up. We'll take care of that. Uh, let's see, made me lose track. Shout out to my man Ron. Thank you so much for the ten bucks. I repeat, Robinson. Big shout out to you for the five bucks. Um, who else we got up in here? Kevin Whitaker. Thank you for the five dollar cash app. Willie Abram, three bucks. Thank you, Randy Urban, for the ten bucks. Van Rawls, twenty bucks. Shout out to you, Garon. Big shout out to Garon. Zion Dice, thank you so much for the five bucks. Steve Abuku again at the top. Greg Wilson, thank you too for the for the for the uh, um, cash app. And then my man Quiet Storm, he started off with ten bucks. And earlier today, man, Quiet Storm gave me five bucks. And of course, a big shout out to my man Alvin Holden. And LaDexter came back through with that hot five, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And my man Robinson. So we still need like one more cash app, but we're going to go ahead and do this thing. Look, man, I'm going to open up the chat room. I know a lot of y'all, it's a sore spot for a lot of brothers, man. Talking about these baby mamas and these single mothers, because if you got, if you ain't got one, you was raised by one, and you're still a little sour behind it. And I do understand that. So look, the conversation is conversation rules the nation and we're going to continue doing that y'all make sure y'all go ahead and lock on in and come on in man tap in let's have this conversation let's talk about it and i know between now and when the bullpen fills up we're gonna have plenty of guys uh that are that are in there who want to chop it up y'all make sure y'all give me my cash up again what i'm trying to do i'm trying to experiment i don't really think it's fair for Google to take 30% of everything you all give me. That means I'm working for every six days I work, I'm really only working four. <laughs> you understand? Like, in other words, two days out of my week is dedicated to paying Google. They taking a 30-70 split, and I'm just not with that, man. I, I'm like, I'm gonna try to avoid that. I'm too much of a hustler that. And if all we gotta do is, y'all really appreciate what I'm doing, y'all wanna pay me for my time, pay me through cash now. You understand what I'm saying? And that's right there. But uh, in the meantime, let's check out some of these savory tunes from my my favorite hip hop, my new favorite hip hop hip hop artist, Big Bass DJ man. Shout out to him, man. He got that good stuff. Here's one I enjoy the most, man. But y'all, man, go ahead and come on in the chat room. Let's chop it up. But hey, here's the thing, man. We're leaving. We're not leading. Boom. The reason the bad guy is the bad guy is because he says no when people try to shame him. When they try to invoke, invoke morality. No, I'm not going to lower my standards. No, I'm not going to clean up this mess that is the black community. No, I don't have time uh, to spend my life trying to rehabilitate a woman who's been in the streets. Why? Because she's not worth it. No, I'm not going to do it because my purpose on this earth is not to rehabilitate a woman. My purpose on this earth is to figure out what the most high wants me to do and begin to do that. And then when a helpmate comes along, I will accept her help, a helpmate, not a patient. The most high said he'll send you what? A helpmate, not a patient. It's not your job to psychoanalyze these broads and get them healed up and help raise their bastard kids. It will be a drain on your resources and prevent you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's not your job. Back in America, she run a mouth. A lot of you niggas are scared of KK Keisha. Call the police up, never tell you about that threesome. Thinking she decent. Went in the house, room started smelling like feces. Bad bitch, but she nasty. Bitch, you were heathen. You don't need marriages, leasing. Travel for keepers. We don't do creepers. We don't do no Shaniquas. You gotta keep up. Bitches are bad, bad. And y'all ain't competing. BBLs, American hoes be cheating. Up in Thailand, we be cheap. And out in Brazil, get that treatment. No, you hate it. That's why you be speaking. We travel the first of the weekend. That's the weekend. Why we spend Dominican chicks with a body like Cardi Your face like a Mario no beefing She keep it high up Here we stuck She hit that high No, baby we up We travel the first of the weekend At the weekend Why we spend Dominican chicks with a body like Cardi Your face like a Mario no beefing She keep it high up Here we stuck She hit that high No, baby we up I'm leaving out tonight You can keep that Ho, ho, no Talking like we ain't got no broke hoes Baby daddy drama trash ho, oh no You fucking with a passport bro, bro, ho, ho You fucking with a passport bro, bro, ho, ho You fucking with a passport bro, bro, ho, ho You fucking with a passport bro, bro, ho, ho You fucking with a passport Is there <laughs> traveling overseas? Shout out to all the passport bros Somebody type passport bros in the chat room. Yeah, yeah, we got
got two of my favorites up in here, man. What's happening, man? We got Alvin in here and the contractor, man. Big shout out to the brothers, man. Always good to have y'all in here, man. Let me share. Can if you don't mind, give me a let me get a little point of personal privilege here. I post this, I, I get so much pushback when I post pictures of myself with my little boys up. And and this is a picture that touches my heart. Uh, as you guys know, those of you guys who follow my broadcast, you learned a little something about my children. Uh, number one, Roman was very sick when he was a little boy. He had all kinds of allergies and ailments and these sort of things. You see what I mean? And so uh, they would often drop him off at my office. So I'm up there at my law office with my suit on, and uh, the little fella, he needed to sit on his daddy, you know, and he would just sit on my chest. I really couldn't get much done. You see what I mean? So I just spent a lot of time just holding him and nurturing him. You see what I'm saying? And so I, I say all that to say that uh, it's important as a father, you can't be hard, hard all the time. You give your kids what they need when they need it. Now, if we just want to flip the script, uh, if you guys, again, and I know I got my, my favorite guys in here, it's always good to have these brothers up in here, man. It's like, it's like getting together with my brothers. You see what I mean? And just chopping it up after a long day of work, man. You know, this is the virtual bar, except without the alcohol. Well, I ain't been drinking no alcohol. I don't know what y'all been doing. <laughs> but um, on, the, on, the flip, on the flip side, uh, this is what that little boy turned into. You see what I mean? I'm going to show you this little sickly little boy, you know, who is always whining, whose tummy hurt all the time. Uh with his assistance of his dad's love and attention and time and all that energy. This is who he is now. You see what I mean? And for the, you guys who don't know, this is, this is my boy. You see what I mean? That's my boy right there. You know? And at some point when he does, you know, decide to date and have a girlfriend or, and a wife, I'm very confident that when it's time for him to stand in the cut and, 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 and do what he has to do to protect his family and raise his children, that he's going to be a strong man. You see what I'm saying? So that's balance. You see what I mean? That's balance. The reason that a father can raise his children as well as both a mother and a father is because at a certain age, they don't need all that effeminate, yeah, I love you, love you. They need attention, as you saw in the first picture, but they also need that masculine training, if that makes sense. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So the daddy is equipped to do that. You see, you, they need their mothers when they're little. They, they look, fellas, they need their mothers. And I'm going to say they need their mothers, you know, for certain things their whole life. But for the most part, during these crucial years, Dad fills those roles. That's why the stats play out like they do. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to say all that. And I'm not tooting my own horn, you see. But, you know, I did want to point that out, that these are the miracles of being a dad if you do it right, man. You wait, you get yourself together, you figure out who you are as a man, you know, and, and you go into, go into fatherhood with a plan. These are the sort of things you can do, man. But, yeah, man, he got he – got, he got feet and hands for you. And that's a grown ass man he's fighting right there. But nevertheless, man, this time, this is the show right here. These gentlemen, the contractor. Welcome, brother. We're, we're, uh, we talked a lot about these horrible minds. I put Tia Mari up. That photograph says a lot to me. You saw my photograph. What does that photograph of this young woman say to you, man, her and her kids? What are your thoughts, brother? Destruction of oh, Jimmy protocol. Salute to you, sir. Salute to the panel, the chat. Yes, but sir. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to do this one because all I see is destruction. But mm. I see a uh, soon to be a feminine little boy. Mm, mm, mm. His mama got him dressing like, like you said, looking like, looking like a, look, looking like a um, member of that community over there. You know, I didn't, I didn't know there was a boy. To be honest with you, but uh, I, I didn't know it's, either. It's, man. it's another. Look at that. If you told me I was a little girl, I wouldn't be surprised. That's the cold part about it. You see what I mean? And that's, that's what how they this do, huh? So that's why I can say either a woman or some effeminate dude got this little boy dressed. You see what I mean? 
Um, but anyway, man, let me get, let me, that's, we're just doing our little opening round. My man, Alvin Holden, always good to have you in here. Simple shit TV, sir. What would you like to add to the broadcast, brother? Hey man, salute to you, sir. Um, salute, yes, to sir. salute to the chat. I see somebody else's problem. Mm, mm. Um, <laughs> that's it. I see somebody else's problem. I'm not. I gotta. I gotta. No, 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 I gotta no, 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 Alvin then turned the cold shoulder. I mean, Alvin's shoulder is we. Just, it's frostbite on the back of his shoulder. Go ahead, brother. Look, go ahead. Look, if, if you do the numbers, if you do the numbers, there is yeah. enough out there for us to. So you could just go on ahead and pass, mm. pass, yeah. pass, 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 yeah. and let yeah. them go. So single mother of two or divorcee of two, two children. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Old used up box. Mm. Yes, mm. somebody else can have it. It's cool. There's probably like a 60 or 70 year old man, you know what I'm saying, that wants to ride off into the sunset, that already has his own stuff, that just wants a, a, a warm body and somebody to give him a sponge bath or something she qualifies mm. for. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> fellas, ladies, <laughs> Alvin represents a, a large contingent of black men and men in general who feel that way. You see what I'm saying? So it's the truth. Accept it or don't accept it. It don't change the truth. Cody, welcome to the broadcast, brother. What would you like to add to this conversation uh, about, I mean, I, I gave a lot of stats about single mothers. And it's not unknown to these women what single mothers do and the effect they have on society. Yet they still do it. So what that leads me to believe, Cody, is that they want to be single mothers. The floor is yours. Uh, I wanted to say a uh, salute to Alvin and the panel and to the chat room, including Dennis. Um, welcome back, brother. Um, yeah. I want to tell you that uh, what what I'm seeing here is that see the word that word choice is a it, it's a word that people got to really be careful with. And if they say by choice, that means they already chose that path that they wanted to walk on. So they picked that struggle. Understand what I'm saying? And what I'm seeing on that picture, what Tia Mori is doing is a, a, a huge step backwards. It's not a step forward. It's a huge step backwards. While Corey might end up going with another woman, and she might up might end up getting angry because mm. he's like a uh, Giselle with uh, Tom and Tom Brady. Huh, <laughs> right. You know, right. Yeah, yeah. one of those examples. Yeah, and it's gonna yeah. be that shoulda, woulda, coulda moment. And yeah, Kim but, Kardashian. And yep, Kim, Kim Kardashian. Oh, oh my God! Oh, my right. Yeah. It's female nature, man. Just what y'all say. That's my son. That's Dennis right there. He's 16 years old. And that is one of his instructors. That's one of his instructors that he's fighting against. And so, you know, look what boys can do with the power of a father. I'm not some amazing man. You see what I mean? I'm pretty much a normal guy. But what you do with your sons, you see what I mean? The, the confidence you instill in them, the masculinity, the rewards for masculinity. I had a long conversation on the ride home with my fiance and I explained to my, my fiance, I said, I put my boys through trauma. Ever, I said, for 10 years, they've been coming to this one particular place. Uh, eight, nine years, uh, seven years at Shotokan. I mean, I'm sorry, nine years at Shotokan and seven years at Jiu-Jitsu and then boxing and all that stuff off and on. And I put them through that trauma because that trauma represents uh, hardship. It represents pain. It represents difficulty. It's some of the same things I had to experience as a child without all the negativity that goes along with having a daddy who's a drunk or a mother who's a crackhead or a prostitute. Basically, I'm giving them a tough life. And so when life gets hard, they won't fold up like a deck of cards. You see what I mean? Like a lot of you guys, the reason you survived, the reason you're here, because you went through some hard stuff. The reason you're not strung out on drugs right now, the reason that you're where you are, you're because you were disciplined enough. This is what you get from hardship. 
And only your father really, I mean, a, a wise father knows that you got to do this for your children. You can't explain that to a woman. That's just something. The reason your daddy will let you go out there and play football and get banged around and be up in the stands like, yeah, you come home with knots on your head and bruises because he loves you. And women don't understand that type of love. You can't over nurture these kids because all they're going to do is rebel. I went into a lot of sociology today, a lot of psychology of these young boys. That boy is tired of hearing his mama. He's tired of hearing his mama's voice. He's tired of seeing her dressed like a whore. He's tired of being her being the center of attention and, and putting him in the middle. He's tired of that. And she don't get it. The floor is open, fellas. We got a little time to talk, man. What are y'all thoughts on that, man? Can I make a quick observation? Of course, brother. Go ahead. The floor is open. Your sons don't don't move backwards. <laughs> they're, they're always moving forward. <laughs> well, they, they, they better move backwards sometimes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. But but anyways, uh, no, we'll, we'll just real quick. I mean, you know, it's it's trendy for uh, these lovely ladies to do these things. And yeah, again, right. society hasn't punished them for their behavior. They celebrate it. And unfortunately, until that stops altogether, which I don't believe it will, um, they're not going to change, which which ultimately means, in my honest opinion, that we are going to have to find women from somewhere else and they're mm -hmm. going to have to uh, they're going to have to bump their heads on their mm -hmm. own. And we're going to have a look. Healthcare, guess what? There's a massive population, do the numbers, of mm -hmm. some mid-30s to like 50, 60, 70-year-old women single by themselves that are going to hit the healthcare system and smash Ooh. it up for everybody. Yeah, good point, good point. Cody, what you want to – the floor is open, fellas. Also, so also, uh, also observe, those who have a father in the household and that balance in the family structure – you always observe that the boy is always humble. Mm, good point. Good point. Yeah. Because it was like, like with me, it was like, why are you so cool and humble? Like, because I had that father figure in my life. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, and every time man, you know. my mother and father were divorced, you know, at an earlier age. However, my mom was like, you know what, you're going by your daddy today. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, I kind of hated it at one, when I was younger, but once I realized it helped me mm -hmm. at the same time because I needed that father figure in my life. I needed that 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 actual father to actually tell me, you know, that this is what this is how you're supposed to handle life. He also was teaching me how to fight. I didn't want to fight, but he was teaching me a lesson mm -hmm. that. You, if, if you want it, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be willing to fight for it. Let, let, me, blood, let, me, let me share something else with you. So you have a situation where if you got a man in the house, the children don't need to act like men. Your sons don't need to act like a man. There was an, ex, they're not an experiment. But there were some poachers who had killed off a bunch of uh, male elephants in, I believe it was Kenya or some wildlife park. And the teenage male elephants, they was going crazy. I mean, they was flipping over the rhinos, knocking over trees, stomping on people, chasing people down. And so they reintroduced some male, full-grown male bull elephants. And immediately, those young teenage elephants got back in line. So what does that tell you? The mere presence of a man in a household brings order to that household. The mere presence of masculine Grown men brings order. There was a a, a a school, I believe it was in Detroit or somewhere in the Midwest, where the kids was cutting up and acting a fool. And so the fathers got together and like six, and they just showed up at the school. And the kids was like, everybody got in line. You see what I mean? And that just shows you the power of a father. There's chaos in these households. Y'all heard the study, the households are dysfunctional. And and look. And I know the contract is something you wanted to say in Hassan Miller. We have got to, these women are not going to willingly give up power. And so we have to strip those rights that we gave them, that gave them power. Presumption of full custody. We have to do a presumption of 50-50 custody. We have to do uh, uh, we the, the whole 
making it easy for them to take the kids through child support. We got to do away with that, put caps on child support. We have got to begin to take these laws back away from these women. Because believe it, it was men that gave women these laws, and it's going to be men that stripped them of these laws. Let's keep that in mind. My man, Hassan McMillan and Alvin Holden, look, man, I want to keep this conversation going, and I think this would be a great conversation for you to keep going over on your page if you wanted to, uh, if you want to set that up. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to get a couple more questions in from Hassan and then the contractors so we can, you know, tidy it up. Hassan McMillan, you came in late to the broadcast. I don't know how much of you've seen, but what are your thoughts on this conversation? And we're talking about Tia Mori and this photograph that she has. And to me, a picture is a, that says it has a thousand words. But what are your thoughts on this thing, man? Um, well, th thank you for letting me come on the panel. Uh, shout out to the panel. And everyone in the chat. But I, I saw the whole uh, mm -hmm. whole debate, the whole situation. Yes, sir. And as I watched it, it did take me back to what one of the, what Cody said about Tom Brady. Mm. His, wife was, his wife was raring to go, man. She was. She was raring. Like, raring. Yeah. And, and the yeah. thing about this, and I'm thinking like, you married this man, no, he's quote unquote the most winningest quarterback in the league. Yeah. You know this man is football, and this football is this man's life. Yeah. And and now she's upset because he he uh, got one of our so called compatriots from Victoria's Secret, who's a lot younger. You got the guy. Yep. Yeah. And now you feel some type way. You ran him off. You can't get mad for a man for being a man. And and the and the sad part about it is, you figured if that happened to one guy, most of us would say, "Hey, look, fellas, you might not want to do this because this is what's going to happen to you." And we learn mm -hmm. from our mistakes. But. I feel bad for her, but I'm kind of like Alvin. I don't, I don't care. feel bad for her at all. I don't, I don't care. I was I like, hey, was, but, bro, but I I, I, was, go ahead. I agree, but I got one deeper than that. What happens if her ex husband star actually rises? What happens? Oh, yeah. well, look, let me what tell happens? you. Something. Tom Brady. Do, like, uh, on the show, like Justified or Navy. No, no, Steel, no. Or Tom Brady could no, end no. up being. Tom Brady could end up being the president of the United States. He could be. I'm talking about uh, T.M.I. I mean, he, he is, let, let, let me let me let me run it down. He's a thoroughbred white boy. He's yep. he's a goddamn Back. hero. He's Back. he he. And let me tell you, he's the right kind of white. Okay, he is. Yep. He got the white boy named Tom Brady, new yep. president of the United States, 2055. You see what I Now what what I'm saying been. is what what is her. What is she gonna be saying that damn I could have been the first lady? You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, you don't leave a man like that, ladies. That's just stupid. I can tell you that. How you gonna leave Tom Brady? He's gonna make more money after football than he made during football through endorsements, trumps, and these sort of things. And look, and he traded you in and got a younger model just like you. See, women overvalue themselves, they overvalue themselves tremendously. And it's not, and, and let me tell you, and you black men, brothers, y'all have been overvaluing black American women, and that's why they acting ass on you. Now that you got your passports, now you can say, oh, we ain't got to come back to the table. Matter of fact, we are going to go mediate this case somewhere else. We found a new buyer for our services, and we're going to go over here. And see, now, instead of just having these local fives and sixes and sevens to compete with got you thinking you a nine or a 10. Now you got to compete with these international eights, nines and tens, which is going to put you in the, in the area of a two or a three or a four or a five, make you average again. And that's all that man did. Giselle got beside herself. You see what I'm saying? Who else got, uh, what's that? But what's the, the Kim Kardashian got beside yeah. herself. Bitch, you, a 50, you a 50 some year old woman and you married to a billionaire. And you got the nerve to leave him for Pete. Pete, what, what was that boy's name? Davidson. Pete, up, Pete Davidson. Davidson. No car. Oh, yeah. she got rid of Pete Davidson. Yeah, because he was a fool. You see what I'm she saying? Should, he, she shouldn't have even been with him, though. She shouldn't even been with him. You know I, I, mean? I have definitely saved two or three marriages. A couple of my female clients that were on the edge, and I was like, hey, yeah. look, can I, can, I, can I be square with you? I'm like, you don't want to be out here in these streets no. trying to date. You That's are too like, old. Imagine, <laughs> imagine Beyonce leaving Jay-Z and dating Lil Baby. Imagine Beyonce play. leaving Jay-Z and dating Lil Baby. Imagine that. Lil that goes downhill. Yeah, it's all downhill. All downhill. Yeah. 
rap. But, uh, man, the contractor, you ain't spoken in a minute, man. You Did you have something you want to add in on this thing, brother? Actually, yeah, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, with, I'm with, I'm with Alvin. I don't, I don't feel bad for her. I feel bad for the kids. That's yeah, because that's they cool. went from you went from a successful, intact family. Mm -hmm. The mama want, the mama want to have a hot girl summer and just start it up to throw that top pocket back out there. I mean, for all that, she she should just give them kids to their father. I had a similar situation. That's that's how my thing went down. I know. So I, I get it. Bro, okay, so let's look at the logic. She wanted her freedom, right? The kind, let, let, let's analyze this logic because I want you to see the lies in this logic. If I was cross-examining somebody, ma'am, you indicated that your whole motive and purpose was, was that you wanted your freedom. Is that correct? And how would you define freedom? That's the freedom to be able to go where I want to go and do what I want to do. Well, ma'am, you have two children, right? Are you telling yeah. us that when you're ready to pick up and leave, even if the children are in the house, one of them under the age of 10, you just up and leave? No, I don't do that. So you truly don't have your freedom, do you? No. Well, how would you be able, the only way you'd be able to get your freedom if these kids are holding you from going and doing the place you want to do is to give them to your dad, right? Yeah, but I'm not going to do that. Because if they get a kid to the dad, then she loses the control that she really wants. These women, look, bro, these women really want to have control they want to have say so. They want to control themselves. They want to control their children. They want to be able to control the men that the children are attached to. And that's the way they do it. They can't do it in a marriage. To them, slavery, they equate marriage to slavery because they can't have control and do anything they want to do. There's no structure in being a single mother. Men put structure on hell, a pimp or put a woman on some structure. You see what I'm saying? They don't want no men around because they want to do whatever they want to do. They want to be loose as a goose and high as a kite. This is what you have to understand. And the, and the reason I'm telling you fellas this is because when you're dealing with these broads, okay, you got to figure out who is the woman standing in front of me? Is this a control freak? Is this a woman who wants to be in control? Because if she is, you got to run from her. There's plenty of them out there like that. You got to run from women like that, man. They're going to make your life. Because, see, let me tell you what's the danger about a woman like that. And y'all hit on this earlier. If she can't control you, she want to destroy you. If she can't have you, she want to destroy you. You see what I'm saying? That's what you're dealing with a lot in the black community. That's why when you break up with that broad, she calling the police on you. You break up with her, she take your kids away because she want to rip your heart out of your chest. You understand what I'm saying? So y'all think about that, man. But look, look, man, we we 211 over, baby. We 211 over. I got to send y'all over to Alvin. Alvin is over at Simple Shit TV. Y'all need to go ahead. What, what they call it? Tap in, baby. Tap in. <laughs> can I, can I, can I, ahead, can I say something real quick on? Two seconds. Whenever they say, I want, oh, I want to be free, all they're saying is, look them deep in the eyes and just realize, they're all they're saying is, I want to be a hoe. Yeah, I was told you let a hoe be a hoe. They got penis let her go. to make. They got to make some more. They got to schedule some more penis appointments. My man Hassan, I know you wanted to say one something else before uh, y'all go over and hang out with Al. What was that, brother? Go ahead. Nah, I'm just wondering what's gonna happen if uh if Tio Mari's ex husband get a show or a movie and he blows up. Like it could very well person. happen. This brother, I mean, look and, at and, and, and if it happens, and it used to be they had to go through some kind of workout regimen where he gets a little buff, a little strong. And then he gonna mess around, pick up a white chick, and his wife gonna feel some type way about it. She's gonna be younger, tighter, firmer. And she gonna and like most most women don't realize what they do until they're done. And after they're yeah, done, but she bro, she's already that, that woman's that, almost that woman's almost 50. And he, that woman's right. almost 50, and he can reach back and get him a 20-year-old and re, and push the reset and button. He probably will. Oh. And it's over. And will. the lesson that women have to learn is you cannot compete with men, bitch. Your hot girl summers are between the ages of 18 and maybe 23 or 24. After that, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, it's a wrap, it's a wrap. Y'all go check my man Alvin out at, uh, uh, Alvin, if you can uh, put this in, the, uh, put, I'm trying to, uh, you can put it in the private, I don't even think I had it up here. But yeah, man, y'all go check Alvin out. Y'all go over there and hang out with him and chop it up with him. You know, I got these kids. I'm tired, shit. But uh, anyway, thank you guys so much. I've had a great time. Again, I'm trying to do something different. We're going to try to keep this experiment going for maybe 30 days, 60 days. 
and I want to see if I'm able to generate more money for myself by going through cash out because I don't really want my people to get in pimp like that. You see what I'm saying? Y'all donate money to me. And it was cool when it was like a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But now I'm actually making some money. I'm like, Hey, I can actually do something with this. I can actually take some of this money. I can actually make some more TV shows. And the, and the thing is, I'm not going to ask y'all to fund me like that. I'm going to take my own money. I'm going to earn the money. I'm going to do it. And then y'all can contribute if you like the product. See, I own a black business. And the reason I'm successful is I put the best product possible out there. That business is the practice of law. I practice a high level law business. I put high quality TV shows out. I get high quality music and music videos I put out. You see what I'm saying? It's a, and, and when you're dealing with an A plus minded person, that's what you're going to get. I put A plus children out there. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not going to do this shitty. I'm not, I'm going to build a school in the middle of the fucking hood somewhere that's falling apart. Or, 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 or this other fat motherfucker over here talking about, yeah, y'all niggas come invest in the, in the Tulsa, Oklahoma, Negro, rebuild the Negro plantation fund. And then the money end up. No, I don't do that to you. And I hate those professionals who do that because they give professionals a bad name. I'm not like them niggas. I, I, I'm trying. I know the profanity police don't want me cussing. I'm not like them niggas. Don't put me in the same category of them niggas. I was never part of the talented tenth. I'm just a nigga that did good. You see what I'm saying? I'm again, again, profanity police. I'm sorry. I apologize, but I got to make a point. Don't put me in the category with them. Okay. Those are the type of people that people come to me to sue. You understand? Don't put me in that category. Don't ever put me over there with them. I don't like them either because they give all of us are educated and professional class. For too many centuries, the educated, whether it's a preacher or a teacher or whoever, have been preying upon the regular black people. And we look up to those people because we think they have our best interests at heart. I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to keep it 100 with you at all fucking times, whether you like me or not. I'm going to always be honest with you. I'm going to talk to you just like I talk to my kids. I tell my children, I will never lie to you. It's some shit I won't tell you, motherfuckers, because you're too young. You see, like my, my old, I'm going to share a little secret with y'all. When my son was five years old, he said, Daddy, how did you get lost as a baby? I damn near cried, man. And even now, the tears are swelling up in my eyes. How did you get lost as a baby, Daddy? I didn't want to tell him that my mom and the man who I'm named after got together and didn't tell the man that, you know, seeded me into this. Well, I didn't want to tell my children that it was too much. You see what I mean? You don't put, you don't lay no, you don't lay that on a five-year-old. That would be irresponsible parenting. Now he understands at 16. And when they get a little older, I'm going to let them read my book when they get in their 20s and they can conceptualize some of these things. But I will never lie to you all. And that's the promise that I, and I'm going to never take nothing from y'all and make you promises that I can't keep. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I want you all to remember me when I'm long gone as a black man with integrity. I could have been a lot richer if I stole from you like some of our other professionals do. I could be a lot richer if I lied to you and, and, and the, but I'm not going to do that, man. Cause money don't move me like that. I appreciate y'all paying me for my time because it means you got some in on this. You putting some in on the sack, so you're listening. You got some skin in the game. But that's the only reason to keep our relationship one-on-one -on -one, because I don't want you using me, and I ain't going to let y'all use me, and I ain't going to use y'all. That's why I say, hey, man, contribute to the cash app. Show me some love. But bottom line is, man, I want to earn everything y'all give me. I want you. I want y'all to say, man, Uncle D earned everything, man. All the time and energy, the hours and the three, four, five, ten years or four, five years he spent chopping it up with us every night. I never had a lawyer talk to me like that. I, this man is a highly paid professional attorney. You see what I'm saying? Roman. Roman. Dennis. Where's Roman? I'm going to prove a point to y'all. I'm just going to prove a point. Just so y'all know, I'm not. Tell Roman to come down here. Real quick, just I want to prove a point to y'all, just to let you know 
what I give up to be here every night. You see what I'm saying? And then I'm gonna try to get this little fella here. He ain't, he busy. <laughs> but the bottom man is I love y'all, man. And my, my legacy is more important to me than my ego. You see what I mean? That's why I bring y'all brothers up here and we speak as, as equals. That's why I show you all the respect. I address you as sir. You see what I mean? Because I expect y'all to treat each other like that. Because I want this world, at least amongst black men, I want us to have a certain level of camaraderie. You see what I mean? And for these women to be, oh, we don't need a man in the house. That's jacked up. What does that say about us? We're that insignificant. I don't hear white women out there talking about I ain't need no man in the house, even though it's something that's beginning to grow. But you see what them white boys doing? Oh, okay, bitch, we're going to take your motherfucking alimony back then. Ha <laughs> ha, how about that? You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh you don't need? Oh, bitch, we're going to be 50 50 then, bitch. Oh, you don't need me, bitch? I'm going to get a new model, bitch. I'm gonna fuck you, bitch. I'm Tom Brady, bitch. <laughs> Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. right. the white boys, they know, what, they know how to handle these bras. They just be grabbing them and. Yeah, driving them into the ground. You see what I'm saying? But brothers, mm -hmm. y'all different. Yeah, don't, don't do that. that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, anyway, man, I'm going to let y'all go, man. Uh, God bless y'all. Y'all go hang out with Alvin. Alvin got good shit going on over there. Y'all enjoy it. Y'all chop it up. Um, you know what I'm saying? And and, and 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 just keep doing this, man. Keep If y'all, I'm just, I'm so disappointed in some of y'all. I went on vacation for about 10, 11 days. And it's like, where are my people at? Where y'all at? Like, you know, I went, I want to see y'all kicking ass and taking names even when I ain't here. I'm watching. I'll be looking at y'all programs when I ain't here. Keep doing what you're doing. One man down, 10 men stand up. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Y'all remember that, man. Yeah. Don't forget, don't, don't forget that. I'm 49 years old. My ass ain't gonna be here forever, but there's plenty of y'all out there that can stand up. You understand me? You feel yeah. me? Sir. Uh, that's your charge. That's the charge I give you. I'm your Uncle D. That's the charge I put on your back. Keep and what we need to do. Here's another thing, and I, I'm 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 long winded. Another thing we need to do. These simps. These simps are dangerous. It's time for us to go ahead and crucify these simps. These simps amongst us, because uh, what's up, young brother? How you? I'm so sorry. I apologize. This is my little boy. I was telling him the story about when you was sick. And now you're not sick no more. <laughs> you guys don't know this is the Crimson Sun and his <laughs> Versace robe. I ain't got no goddamn Versace. He's got a, he's got a Versace robe. Yeah, yeah, Playboy got it. But 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 I told you, man, he's he been fighting for 10 years. He lived the lifestyle of a athlete. You see what I'm saying? I put a lot on him and I expect a lot. I'm gonna ask you a question. And you know, daddy don't like to tell all his business. Does daddy need this three, four hundred dollars? How much money did daddy put in the bank today? Uh 98000 Tell him again. 98000 And how much of that was for daddy himself? 36000 You understand what I'm saying? Now, last time we went to the bank was about a month ago. How much did I Do you remember how much I put in? Banking and how to put money in the bank. You understand me? Like man. You see, I love you and I respect the time I spend away from spending time with my children. I spend with you because I love you. I truly love you. And I want young men like this to have role models like Alvin Holden and the contractor and Hassan McMillan and Cody Marshall to look up to of the same mindset. You understand me? I want you all to reinforce these things I'm telling you all and your children and the other young men around. And we can't do that if they putting the men out the house, ladies. All you good black women, you need to talk to these deranged 304s and let them know, girl, you crazy. You know, you want to, you, you want to, you enjoying this too much. Get, get up out of here. You enjoying this too much. Get out of here. You can't He enjoys you know, He be listening to everything I say. Sometimes he be down here using my voices and saying shit. Like he said, he said Negro. I'm like, you can't say Negro. <laughs> you 13. You don't know. But I'm like, Lord Jesus, what am I creating a monster? But anyway, like I'm saying, fellas. We, the good black women and black men like yourselves, we have got to do what the white boys do. We got to do what everybody do. We got to put out, we got to put the smack down on these simps, these, these pandering ass PhDs who are telling these women everything they want to hear just so they can keep getting that cheese from them. We got to start holding them, holding their feet to fire. Big shout out to my man, Big Bass DJ, man, Big Bass Life. Thank you so much, Big Bass DJ, man. Appreciate you, Big Bass DJ. Thank you so much. So talented. 
But again, we need to put the smack down on these simps, man. They shouldn't be able to go and have these little talks and concerts and char. No, nah, they need to be shouted down. Stop saying that stupid shit, fat boy. Sit your ass down. You're not helping out anymore. Lying to these women. Shut them down. You see what I mean? They don't need everybody don't deserve a voice, especially when they speak in lies and misdirection. That's the enemy. You understand? Not somebody that I want y'all to go out and 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 and, <laughs> and, 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 and use your hands and feet on, but you can definitely use your voices to shout them down. They don't deserve to be able to speak in the public forum anymore. Yeah, they might have a right to say what they want, but you had a right to shout them down. That's what I want you brothers to do. Please do that. Please use your voices. But either way, man, God bless y'all. Love y'all. Big shout out to my man, the contractor. Always good to see Cody Marshall. Super big shout out to Hassan McMillan and my man Alvin Holden. Y'all go over there to Simple Shit TV. It's right there on the screen. Simple Shit TV. Y'all go over there. Y'all hang out with him, man. Y'all finish chopping it up. Come up with some plans, man. Uh, as I always say, man, this is Uncle D. I love y'all. I'm out. <laughs>